Hi everyone, here is the Chemist once again, and today I'm reviewing Look at Me by Jennifer Egan, her second novel and one of the most haunting reading experiences I've had in a long time. It took me about a week to read this book, and every time I sat down with it, I was more and more excited to discover what was going to happen, or even just to experience Egan's style. Uh, I've talked about it uh, in a recent review of her short stories uh, collection, Emerald City. Uh, I hope I talked about it in other videos too, but Jennifer Egan writes in such a beautiful style. She has a knack for describing the most fleeting and the most undescribable loss of feelings and experiences in very clear, very beautiful language. Every time I had a blast, but every time I was also all more and more anxious to see what was going to happen, to see what type of prophecies I was going to encounter in the book. I finished it yesterday morning and I, and I have to say that I was quite happy I had finished it and I could put it aside uh, and look at pictures of kitties for a while. Why is that? First things first, Look at Me follows a rather interesting narrative structure, perhaps not as peculiar and playful and self-reflective as in uh, The Keep, also by Egan, uh, but still there are quite some interesting metafictional moments in Look at Me, uh, and some moments, some reflections on the act of writing, on the act of um, describing an event through a narrator, through a narrator's perspective, uh, that will they will make you look at the novel under a different light, they will make you maybe reconsider some of what you've been reading. It's definitely a novel for people who are interested in the process of writing, in the process of reading. It's self-reflective, but by any means don't take this to be a metafictional, Borgesian, Calvinesque sort of book. In a way it is very much a straight-up realist novel, and that peculiar structure I mentioned is nothing too scary. Uh, the novel follows two parallel narratives, one uh, in the first person, one in the third person, uh, set mainly in New York, uh, with following the life of the main character, who is a model who, in the novel's beginning, has a peculiar accident, you'll read about it, and the other narrative is set in Rockford, Illinois, where she grew up, uh, and which is taken almost as a synecdoche of Middle America, Midwestern America, uh, Rust Belt America, places that were famous and wealthy and great, uh, maybe in the course of the 20th century, but which have faced a terrible economic and industrial downfall. And hey, the first of the many tricks that Look at Me pulls off is balancing this double structure beautifully. In novels of this sort, following two parallel storylines, it seems to me that very often you end up caring about one of the two more than the other, so that when you have to read the, the story that is a little bit less interesting, maybe you are constantly feeling like you would so much rather follow that other, more interesting character, never so in Look at Me. Both of these storylines are equally interesting, they also um, in many ways tap into each other, exchange characters in curious ways, exchange po uh, reflection points and exchange ideas in a beautiful way, they resonate with one another uh, in a such a fascinating way, and it's always interesting to follow both of these parallel lives, both Charlottes, both uh, both protagonists in both storylines are called Charlotte, uh, and in the way, by um, incidentally, in the way the novel focuses so much, as mentioned, on a uh, city uh, in Middle America which is confronted with a wealthy past and a glorious past, but right now uh, ha is down on its luck. This book reminded me a lot, more than any other book I've read probably, of Jonathan Franzen. Uh, not so much as Jonathan Franzen of The Corrections, which still um, resonates again very interestingly with Look at Me, also because, by the way, they both came out in 2001. I believe Look at Me came out um, just before the corrections, uh, but I'll have to check uh, about that. It reminded me a lot more than that of The 27th City, Jonathan Franzen's debut novel. Both of these novels are concerned with the fate of, once again, cities that are down on their luck. They are concerned with um, the structure of the nuclear family and the way family relations uh, have evolved in the 80s and 90s and the way teenagers interact with their parents in the modern world uh, and the way couples' lives are lived uh, in this type of middle America. 
and also, interestingly enough, with terrorism and with themes of domestic terrorism and with the way the world perceives America. Uh, and both of these novels mix these very um, common realist themes on the structure of families, on the state of um, communities that date back most notably to George Eliot's Middlemarch, they reinvent that very standard type of realist novel, but and they mix that, they mix that uh, that genre with the political thriller and with some elements of danger and with characters unknowingly entering into relationships with dangerous people, and that's just one of the reasons that make the novel so engaging and entertaining and thrilling, uh, just as the Twenty Seven City teaches us, or books like uh, Garth Riskalberg's City. On Fire teach us, family sagas and books focusing on cities in a specific moment in history are all very fine, but they also benefit immensely from the occasional bomb either going off or looming on the horizon. I mentioned that the two storylines in Look At Me exchange a few reflection points and possibly the main idea, the main concept that it ex is explored extensively throughout the novel is the fa uh, this idea that one character has that we are what we see. Uh, the novel is very concerned with the, um, the centrality of the image, of images, advertising, uh, modeling, movies, uh, TV series, the internet, uh, of these types of images, of very popular images in contemporary society. Not incidentally, the main character, the main protagonist is a model uh, whose life changes after that, um, that accident I told you about. As you learn from the very first pages of the novel, people stop recognizing her after this accident. And this allows the novel to come up with some very interesting prophecies on the way our image-obsessed society is going to shape the very way human beings see the world and see each other and interact with each other. That is peculiarly sinister because this reflection is echoed with another character's descent into madness. That character who came out with the formula, the aphorism, we are what we see, I let you discover his history uh, in the course of the novel by yourself because it's truly fascinating, truly disturbing. He is definitely one of the strongest characters I've read in a long time. But at the same time, he is paranoid, mad reflections and uh, visions of the future are constantly echoed in the developments you read in the novel. This feels very much like reading a horror story where you see a terrible threat looming on your horizon or a terrible prophecy becoming a reality and that is all the more terrible because this prophecy does not refer to any monster from the stars or to any alien god rising from the oceans. It refers to changes in our society brought forth by the internet, by social networks, which actually you can see in uh, the world around you if you look outside the confines of the book. That's truly one of the scariest things about Look At Me, that this book foresaw the rise of social networks and the way social networks changed our society, changed the very way we thought, we interacted with each other, we conceived of people, personalities, celebrities, the news, Oh my god, it's such a sinister world this novel depicts, and much of it has already become a reality. That's what is so scary about this book, what made me so anxious, as I mentioned. And the beautiful thing here is that in, that, in the course of that process, by making you so anxious about society, the book very much immerses you in the mind of that mad prophetic character I told you about, whose entire purpose in the course of the novel is described as you know, transmitting his vision, making other people see precisely what he is seeing and transmitting them the seeds of what is basically his madness. Look at me, 100% pulls off that old Necronomicon trick of making you crazy. Uh, the more you proceed into it, the more it enlightens the world around you in, and casts a new light under certain things, certain aspects of society you were already familiar with. It plays that beautiful trick that House of Leaves uh, plays so beautifully beautifully, uh, the fact that it's a book about people whose visions and whose experiences make them uh, basically go mad, and the more you read it, the more you feel like you are descending in that same time of paranoia. Pinchon too, of course, um, is beautiful at capturing that feeling. And as such, 
I loved it so much. It's such a beautiful book, a beautiful and powerful narrative experience. Uh, in the way it portrays a deteriorating mind, it's uh, truly up there with uh, The Rats in the Walls by H.P. Lovecraft. In the way it foresees the horrors of social networks and the ways, the noxious ways they are going to change um, our thought processes, our very conceptions of ourselves, this feels a lot like um, Dave Eggers' The Circle, another awesome novels, novel. Uh, the difference is that The Circle came out in, I think, 2011 or 2012, uh, in a world that already knew social networks, um, where social networks were already uh, extensively popular. As such, it is very topical, but for precisely that reason, some of its prophecies, some of the Circle's prophecies, have already come to pass, while some others nowadays feel a bit absurd. I still love The Circle, I still think it's a, a great book, and everyone interested in or afraid of social networks should read it. But look at me, considering it came out in 2001, which seems to me like the prehistory of the modern internet, uh, its prophecies are all resonate all the more loudly, in a way that is clearer, and for that reason all the more relevant. And finally, in the way it portrays the lives of these American families and the downfall of middle America uh, and the state of American society in the late 90s, it, it shares the attention for detail and the psychological insight of, of Franzen at his best. Uh, but, although Franzen uh, actually <sighs> You know, when you read many friends and novels, including The Corrections Freedom, I personally had the impression that all of those people were really obnoxious and terrible human beings. Um, and Franzen, too, is, knows compassion and he can be very compassionate with his characters, but he usually only is so in the last 10 pages or 15 pages, whereas Jennifer Egan's characters are also terrible and are truly bad people in so many different ways, but I got the feeling that she was much more compassionate with them and that she was able much more extensively to show their basically basic humanity and why you should uh, sympathize with them even when they are being terrible with one another. If that wasn't clear enough, I loved Look At Me. I thought it was a masterpiece. It was such a powerful reading experience. It was absolutely addictive and entertaining and thrilling. Uh, and it was so amazingly well written. I'm surprised it is not much more uh, widely known and widely read, uh, just as much as I'm surprised the 27th city uh, is dwarfed in Franz and Silver by later novels, uh, but what can you do? I, you know, all, that, all those references to how disturbing and sinister it is, I do believe that this is not necessarily the book for everyone. Um, probably what I want to say is that it is not in any possible way a feel-good book. Uh, expect a rather disturbing and moving experience, but if you're up for that, by all means dive in. Hey, I loved Visit from the Goon Squad. I loved her short stories. I absolutely love The Keep. The Keep is one of my very favorite novels in the world. One of the best novels I've read in my life. And now I love Look at Me. It seems to me like Jennifer Egan truly is among my very favorite writers. And I'm happy about that and I can't wait to read Invisible Circus, her debut novel and the last one of his books published so far I still have to read. And hey, I'll let you know what I think about that when I read it. Uh, in a second on the screen, I'll put links to my review of Emerald City, her collection of short stories, and maybe to some other stuff I filmed. And thank you as always for watching. Let me know in the comments what you thought of Look At Me. If you still haven't read it, by all means, again, dive in. It's an amazing book, and I will see you in the next review. Bye, guys.